Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in and welcome back to Sewing Laura. In this video we will go over various types of yarn. Let's jump right into this. So here we have the first two types of yarn. Both are all-purpose yarns and you can use both types for a wide variety of sewing and hand stitching projects. So here on the left side we have cotton yarn. The name already says it. Um, it's been made of cotton fibers and here we have polyester yarn made of polyester, which is an artificial fiber. I personally prefer the polyester yarn because I find it, from my experience, sturdier and I find that the stitches last much longer. That being said, if you get a cotton yarn of a good quality, it will be just as sturdy. That's just my personal preference. Now you will notice that these two spools are bigger. That's because the yardage is also higher. So on the smaller spools, it's usually something around 200 meters. That'd be something about 220 yards. And this is usually 500 meters. 500 meters are about 547 yards. These spools are the old type. They look like a thick straw. This is the new type of spools. They are very practical, even though I'm not so fond of the fact that there is a lot of plastic. However, they have this ridge on one end and you can catch here inside of this ridge the loose end of your yarn. So when you're storing multiple spools with yarn in a box, they do not get tangled, which is something that happens a lot with this old type of spools. Whichever size you're gonna buy depends always on the project. If you're planning just a small hand stitching project, there is no need to buy 500 meters. Uh, if you're planning something like a coat or let's say leggings and a top that goes with the leggings, then it is a good idea to get a, a bigger spool. Usually it's a little bit um, cheaper than buying two smaller ones. The next type of yarn I have here is denim yarn. It can be used either for sewing denim or for any projects where you need really thick, sturdy stitches. So it can be for sewing or stitching fall leather, corduroy or any thick material or simply when you want to create stitches that stand out the way the classical stitches on jeans stand out. You can also use this yarn for embroidery because it's really thick. So just to compare how much thicker it is than the all-purpose yarn that we just looked at, I placed here the polyester yarn next to this black denim yarn and you can see that this one is definitely much thicker. And that is something you also have to keep in mind when you look at these spools because even though they look pretty much the same like the spools of the polyester yarn, for example, they hold much less of the yarn. So these hold, as we discussed, about 200 meters, which would be 220 yards. But since the yarn is thicker, the denim yarn, uh, these will hold only something about 30 yards or 33 yards. And that's something you have to keep in mind. So when you're planning a sewing or hand stitching project and you want to use denim yarn, you will have to get more spools than when you would be working with just regular all-purpose yarn. But other than that, it's a great yarn, very sturdy, and can be also very pretty for decorative purposes. So I have here, for example, this tissue holder, and I have used the denim yarn in two colors, in the orangey color and in the yellow mustard color for the embroidery. Speaking of embroideries, I have here the next type of yarn and that's the embroidery yarn. They usually don't come on spools. They mostly come like this and you have to wind them yourself. And they are even thicker than the denim yarn. So this is the embroidery yarn and I will place next to it first the denim yarn so that you can compare it. And now the regular polyester yarn, the all-purpose yarn. So you can see how much thicker it is. And these yarns consist of multiple single yarns, which means you can grab them, you can cut off as much as you need, and then you can separate the yarns, and that way you can decide how thick the yarn will be at the end for your uh, type of project. The embroidery yarns I have here were made of cotton, and it says that one package has eight meters. So that would be what, like 8.8 .8 yards, something like that. And just to give you an example how it looks like when you use them for an embroidery. So I have here this facial mask for which I have used all these 
So that's what it looks like. I did not separate the yarns. I used them in the full thickness because that was my personal preference. But again, you can make the yarn a little bit thinner whenever necessary. Next, I have here metallic thread. This type of thread is being used for either embroideries or for decorative stitching. And an example of decorative stitching is this shoulder patch on one of my shirts in this nice brass color. They come in different colors. I've seen these in yellow, gold, red, blue, green, brass, you name it. These are threads that I don't recommend using for sewing or stitching things together. Definitely just for decorative purposes. And just to give you an idea how they improved over the years. So this one is from early 90s or maybe even the end of 80s. And you can tell that it's not as shiny as the new metallic thread. So obviously they improved these uh, in the last few decades. Another type of thread is either nylon or rayon. So I have here a nylon thread that's pretty much invisible and it's very thin. You can use it for threading pearls or sewing up places where you want it to be invisible or for hanging Christmas ornaments, for example. And of course, you could use it for any project where it's important to you that the stitches would not be visible. And last but not least, I have here the shearing elastic thread. It's not necessarily a yarn per se, but you will use it in a very similar way. That's why I have included it into this video. So you can use it, for example, for threading pearls and you could create bracelets like this that would be stretchy so it would be easy to uh, pull them on your wrist or you could use it for sewing projects so instead of using a regular thread on your bobbin which is the lower thread that will be all explained in the course for sewing beginners you would use this shearing thread and since this is stretchy uh, when you would sew through the fabric, it would get ruffled, but it would be still stretchy like so. So that's shearing. Here is how I store my yarns. I have several of these boxes and I created a grid for each so that I could sort my yarn easily so that they would stay in place and wouldn't get tangled. The only disadvantage of this grid is that I made it a little bit too high, so it's not always easy to see the colors. So I always have to hold it like this at an angle so that I would be able to see which color is where. But that's okay. I have a free tutorial for this on my YouTube channel, so I will try to link it into the description of this video. Hopefully it will work. Uh, then I have here this jar that has been a jar for a facial mask and I basically repurposed it. I'm storing now inside the elastic threads and the metallic threads. And since I don't have many of the embroidery yarns, I simply store them here. And as for the bigger spools, I have more of these jars and I store them usually in something like this or in mason jars. So that's uh, a few ideas for storage. Of course, you could go ahead and Google and see if there is anything out there that's already made, but I personally like repurposing things and using whatever I have at home, but that's just my personal preference. All right, so these were all the different types of yarn. I personally find that it's always a good idea to rather spend a little bit more, but get a yarn of a really good quality because you're already investing time into uh, creating your piece and you want it to be sturdy and to last. Don't forget to check out the tutorials for the tissue hoodies and the facial masks if you haven't yet. Thank you all so much for watching and happy sewing! Mm -hmm.